Hello, my lovelies. It's me, Ned Natter, with the famously unpassed Roy's and unfiltered Ned Natter radio show, ready to brighten your day. First up, it's great to be here with you again. Thanks for your lovely comments and messages. It's time for a good old Natter. But remember, I don't chat about the regular news and current affairs. Oh no, I'm here to give you a break from it all. A good laugh, even when it's only once a week on a Wednesday. <laughs> remember though, you can listen to all my shows again. Yep, they're all saved for you as podcasts at nednatter.com. Yep, okay, well, put everything down. No, I'm everything. I mean you too, come on. It's time for the Ned Natter Show. And you can't miss this. Here at Two Medicine Farm, life goes on and Elsie the wife along with our temporary permanent house guest and expert on just about everything possible. (laughs) Beyond it, yeah, that's Brandisha Washington, or BBW for short, and to her friends. They're both spending half the day now shopping from the comfort of me now, overcrowded and sagging sofa. Yep, online ordering food, snacks and drinks. We've had the mail van and the UPS guy up here every day again this week with endless boxes of mostly food, snacks for beyond it and ingredients for Elsie's ghastly recipes. (laughs) Although both of them are fond of impulse buys too, so they've accumulated a monumental stack of inedible junk too. I mean, a bargain is only a bargain if it's something you actually want to begin with, isn't it? (laughs) Toshiko Suzuki, my lawyer brother and black sheep of the family, Nelson's wife, Heiner's now 103-year-old grandmother. Yep, 103. She celebrated that milestone here this week. She's still keeping up with me ancient, miserable mother, old Nan, you know. And Toshiko's not planning on heading back to California anytime soon. Well, if ever. <laughs> She's enjoying Nan's companionship and despite their wildly opposite cultures and traditions, they've recently become united in old crow adventures. Yep, that's a kind of senior citizen terrorism. (laughs) Well, put it this way, they're the scourge of just about every Florida tourist attraction they happen to visit. This is Ned Natter here with a Ned Natter radio show. When I'm not here, you can find me and my shows at nednatter.com. Still on the farm, it hasn't been a good week for me daughter, young Dolly. Oh no, if you remember, she's got a pet ram called Buck. Well, he's grown fast. Yeah, mostly from eating me dog Clay's food. Yeah, in all irony, the ram's favourite variety is lamb and vegetable. And to be honest... <laughs> He looks like an evil kind of cannibal at the best of times. <laughs> so he gives everything round here a kind of odd look, you know, you know, usually measuring things up before he butts it after death, or at least into submission. <laughs> anyway, with body bulk comes a thick fleece, and with the wool, an 100 degree summer heat comes overheating. Yeah. <laughs> So Dolly looked up this little article online about sheep shearing. Only she's not only a bit slow, she was too fast to find the wrong tools for the job in hand. Yep, scissors and electric human air clippers. <laughs> Put it this way, at the first attempt, but looked as if he'd had a lopsided accidental altercation with me lawnmower. On the second attempt, he looked like a French poodle, but I'd had a run-in with me chainsaw and shop vac. <laughs> Finally, on her third attempt, Dolly had him looking like a molten penguin crossed with an old-school floor mop. She did try and have a final go to tidy up the results, but after a feisty struggle <laughs> with the poor old sheep, Managed to get away, didn't he? Yep. (laughs) Right now he's acres away in the far field and looks like someone has thrown a pile of muddy polyfill stuffing at me barbed wire fence from an airplane. Yep, flying at 6,000 feet. (laughs) This is Ned Natter here with the Ned Natter Radio Show. I'm here every Wednesday. You can find all my shows again at nednatter.com. Despite her troubles with getting around fast these days, old Nan wanted to give Grandma Tashiko her great drinking, knitting and gambling companion. 
Yeah, another one of me <laughs> temporary permanent visitors, we'll say. <laughs> yeah, another Florida cultural experiences time. You know, last time I took the old birds sailing, and other than the usual drama, they managed to scrape by without getting blocked from the sail and dine experience in the future. <laughs> This time, something significant on the cards, so though. It was uh, Toshiko's 103rd birthday, as I mentioned earlier. She's a Leo and has me lovely neighbour and astrologer. Young Alice told me Leos like to be the centre of attention. Of course, I said I was amazed she's still standing, let alone the centre of anything. <laughs> Toshiko told old Nan about missing sushi and her Japanese culture. Oh dear, well, so old Nan went online to find an authentic sushi restaurant. Well, at least as authentic as you could find, I suppose, in Florida, yeah. <laughs> Nan just thought it's seafood and like a regular fish restaurant, see, and booked a table as a birthday treat and kind of surprise. Of course, the old crow asked me to drive him there. Oh dear, well, you wouldn't catch me eating it, so uh, I knew I'd have to leave them to it and sort of sit in the sidelines. <laughs> but that's never a good idea, is it? With Nan, you know, she's got a short fuse, and as she gets older, she gets more cantankerous with it. <laughs> On the other hand, because of her age, she gets away with as much drama as the average two-year-old. <laughs> well, they were off to a good start with Toshiko recommending her favourites on the menu to Nan. The troubles only arrived when the Mexican chef <laughs> came out to see the old birds in person as the waiter set the table and organised the food. Within seconds, Nan had lost the plot with the chef. Her fish wasn't cooked and her dentures have trouble with anything but soft food or liquid. Well, Nan didn't understand sushi for a second. She just went and sipped her drink and it was warm and the food was cold. Nan, oh dear, well, she screeched like a demented crow. And now she was going to call the health department and report them for serving raw food. <laughs> the red-faced chef you know, he soon scarpered to the kitchen for safety reasons and, I suppose, to cook the old bird something special. You know, I imagined it coming right out of a can this time. <laughs> In the meantime, Toshiko assured her that the fish was supposed to be raw and the sake warm. But Nan was having none of it, was she, and began to slurp old neat whiskey from her handy travelling flask to calm her nerves whilst fishing round her bag for a cigarette. <laughs> During the drama, though, the sake got spilled and the sushi made it to the floor and on to several other tables as Nan attempted to feed the other diners with her raw fish as if they were zoo animals. Oh dear, again, I wouldn't suggest that the manager bring out one of them, you know, those high chairs they use for little kids and then strap the old bird into it. <laughs> it would have been safer. Anyway, as the servers attempt to clean up, Toshiko was the only one that saw the funny side of the argument. And her birthday treat was far from ruined after all. <laughs> our next port of call was a nightclub. Well, Nan had seen it online too and mentioned there was loads of good-looking men in the photos. Unfortunately, Nan had no idea it was a gay venue. <laughs> Before heading over to the hot spot, Nan thought the village people were just like the folks she'd known back in rural England as a child. <laughs> she soon learned it wasn't the village she thought it was. Mm. Nan and Shiko were the only women at the bar, although a lot of the men nearby favoured women's clothing too, so they were in reasonable company. <laughs> Either way, they were mostly under 40, less than half the old crow's age, so Nan was delighted. <laughs> Within seconds, she was struggling around the dance floor, of <laughs> causing mayhem with a corrupted dance involving her and her walking stick, and the other patrons ducking every time she swung it through the air. <laughs> to be honest, she'd have been safer on a golf course. <laughs> Toshiko, on the other hand, remained seated in relative safety, discussing her time as a dominatrix in Japan, which an obsessed audience paid great attention to. Yeah, ironic when Nam was the only one ready to dish out the punishment 
with that flailing stick of hers. <laughs> After the drama of the sushi restaurant, the nightclub worked out better. Yeah, and granted the old birds free lifetime membership so they can visit any time they like. <laughs> yep, lifetime. See, the shrewd management were getting not only free entertainment, but no upside risk, were they? I mean, Nan's 95, Toshiko's 103. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, me? Oh, well, after watching the old crows in action, I didn't know what more to say, to be honest with you, other than, fortunately, the village people line up didn't include a farmer. <laughs> so I escaped the mayhem unnoticed. <laughs> This is Ned Natter here with the Ned Natter Radio Show. When I'm not here, you can find me and my shows at nednatter.com. As you recall, me fireman Ding Dang has been well and truly married to Darlene Freebird for a while now. She won't let him indoors, though, and their relationship is more than just unstable. You know, Ding Dang's clan reckon he should try for an annulment of the recent marriage. But he has other plans, and it's encompassed by me fireman's little feature. So here's Ding Dang's southern quote. This time round, it's if she keeps it up, I'm going to cancel her birth certificate. <laughs> oh dear. This, according to him, relates directly to Darlene Freebird still telling everyone in town what a loser he is. <laughs> As you recall... Quinton, me camper, tenant, painter and writer and coagulate his peaceful partner decided to let the homeless and cuckolded Ding Dang stay in the broken down travel trailer which is living in the back of me barn. Well, after only two weeks there have been a few more changes in me farmhand caused by Quinton's the flamboyant eye for the farm guy. <laughs> they even took him to this Really weird, almost surreal place this week. Yep, totally alien to Ding Dang anyway. And before you guess, it's called the Whiter Than White Laundromat. Mm. He experienced these bizarre machines that whirl around and around and actually wash your dirty clothes. Yeah. Add to that, Ding Dang's discovered a new invention. Closer to home, well, it's new for him anyway. It's called a deodorant. <laughs> this is Ned Natter here with the Ned Natter Radio Show. I am here every Wednesday. You can find all my shows again at nednatter.com where they're all stored for you as podcasts. So if you want me repeats, you can handle listen to me old voice all over again. Stop by and say hi. Well, next up, I'm returning to the wife's favourite subject. Yeah, food of course, yeah. Elsie's private recipes and ideas for cooking. Those revolting offerings from the swamp. Oh dear. I cook my own food and leave her to that cosy relationship with her microwave. So this week, Elsie's promised more sweet treats in her feature. Yep, lots of sugar and lots of sugar and perhaps a bit more sugar. <laughs> the last one was hideous enough though, so we'll have to see just how repulsive it all is this time round. Here's the next of her so-called recipes, yep. Elsie's cooking cock-ups. <laughs> so, warm up your microwave and stand well clear in the cooking process, yep. Usually I stay in the barn behind a concrete wall. The recommended distance is at least 50 feet away. Further the better. So, it's Elsie's birthday cake surprise. Oh, well, this time it was supposed to be for Toshiko and based on the Japanese Castella cake. Elsie looked, even went, you know, looked up online. Mm, I think the words are loosely based on the traditional cake, which has only four ingredients. Impossible for any of Elsie's recipes, don't you think, which have close to 40. <laughs> yep, I hope things would improve. Oh dear, so let's see. Elsie's written it all down on the back of the free local phone book. It's the thinnest one I've ever seen, actually. <laughs> anyway, I'm digressing. It's our idiot's handwriting, all right. Scrawled around an advert for a septic tank cleaning service. <laughs> <laughs> There's the usual coffee, soda, ketchup and mustard stains here. And there, and over there too. And that looks like uh, balsamic vinegar. <laughs> anyway, she started out... 
the plastic dog bowl bigger than usual and a load of self rising flour. Mm, I lost count of how much she put in there but uh, she threw a lot in the bowl. <laughs> then added two pounds of sugar, ten eggs, three pounds of margarine, four ounces of raisins, eight of mixed nuts and fortunately once again no cochineal red food colouring. Well you know the cake's supposed to be yellow anyway. <laughs> but of course she added her usual mm, nasty array of condiments here. Yeah. Salt, pepper, mayonnaise and cayenne pepper for extra flavouring. She then whisked it all up with the electric hammer drill. Then cooked it for 50 minutes in the microwave at high heat. Half an hour or so later she shoveled it on out and it had risen all right and was overflowing the bowl. After a few minutes it was ready to eat. But this is the only time Elsie didn't get to tuck in immediately here yeah, with the birthday cake. She has to wait, isn't she, for everyone else. <laughs> As usual, beyond it just held her nose, rolled her eyes and munched on a party-sized bag of onion rings with added vinegar and mustard. <laughs> By the way, as I've mentioned before, the Ned Natter show will not be held responsible for the results. No Elsie's cooking is undertaken at your own risk. It not only needs a strong stomach, it needs an even stronger oven. And if possible, you know, a standalone concrete bomb proof building. <laughs> Once Toshika and Old Nan got sample Elsie's idea of a Japanese birthday cake. That is disgusting! <gasps> It was a disaster. <laughs> Up there with Nan's sushi experience, I suppose, Toshiko was not at all happy. She kept repeating this word, Tawagoto. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it look, I looked it up and it means shite in Japanese. <laughs> hmm. I couldn't have agreed more, but I'd never even think of sampling the wife's cooking. No, old Nan's always got the excuse for her teeth falling out, and beyond it blames her diabetes when it comes to sugary things. <laughs> so Elsie ate most of her own creation after all, although she did give a piece to me dog Clay. And he's been, well, just say green as grass for two days and off his food. He did let out a little wine after eating it though and I could have sworn it was the doggy version of Tawagoto. Yup, his first and perhaps only Japanese word. Oh dear. <laughs> this is Ned Nat here with the Ned Nat Radio Show. I'm here every Wednesday but you can find all my shows all over again at nednat.com. Me blind neighbour old Lonnie and his housemate nudist swinger old Fred are in hiding this week. Well, of course you remember old Fred hooking up on that swinger's website and meeting a group of women on the nudist beach. Well, one of the larger women was not only nude on the beach, but out of uniform too. Yep, she's a cop. <laughs> and ran Fred's licence plate on his old Corvette. The back one, of course, you know, the front one just says swinger in pink letters with a gaudy gold frame. <laughs> Naturally, she had his home address instantly and old Fred wasn't going to dodge this one so easily. Well, you've heard of cops driving prowlers. Well, old Fred got a stalker in a prowler. Or was it just a prowler and a stalker? I'm not sure. <laughs> but, you know, Fred reckons she comes with her own set of airbags. Yep, front, side and rear. Yep, she just like a Volvo. <laughs> Word has it that Lonnie and Fred spent, well, a couple of days hiding in the basement this week. <laughs> I always thought swingers were bad enough, but the arm version troubles me even more. Oh dear. <laughs> On the family front, when she's not complaining about, well, just pick a subject and she complains, me 95-year-old mother old Nan, the miserable old crow herself, as a little feature on me show, yeah. Old Nan remembers. Hmm, oh dear, it's a little bout of what's professionally termed reminiscence therapy. This time, though, it's more bizarre than usual. Well, maybe it was just the whiskey speaking. Either way, she shouted over to me. Well, like the old crow always does. 
I suppose it's like looking at, you know, an old power station, all smoke and noise. <laughs> anyway, she told me she remembered where she did in a big stack of cash, several thousand she reckoned. Well, I thought, well, maybe she'd offer me a little reward for fetching it for her. But oh no, her memory was going back years. She had the money under the floorboards of an house she lived in over 20 years ago. So I said, well, it might still be worth a look, won't it? No, and you know, uh, you know. But then, a little spark in the old crow's brain fired up, and she had another instant memory. Yep, the house burned down in 2000. <laughs> <laughs> the Millennium Fire, they called it. <laughs> oh dear, I wish I hadn't bothered listening to her. This time, she was far too abstract for me. <laughs> this is Ned Nat here with the Ned Nat Radio Show. When I'm not here, you can find me and me shows at nednutter.com. Well then, that lovely twangy old music means it's time again for me book reviews. Yeah, I get me hands on a few, and I feature them right here. Just remember, I've got a great system. If a book's shite, it goes on me compost heap. Sometimes, if it's really bad, I have to burn it. The middle of the road ones, you know, they, they go in me giveaway charity box. And the good or reasonable books usually stay on my farm library shelf. I hope that's all nice and clear for you. OK, well, my farm track is still too muddy, but our new mail carrier and his struggling mail van have no choice. Yeah, he's had to visit on account of LC and beyond its online shopping obsession. Anyway, I've only ended up with one book again this time, I guess. What with their stuff on board? There wasn't enough room left in the van for mine. <laughs> Mind you, on the other hand, I only seem to get books and bills these days. <laughs> At first glance, I thought I shouldn't really review a book like this, you know, especially as it's useless to farmers. After all, we do it fully clothed every day. <laughs> well, that's got you thinking, hasn't it? Yeah, well, this book's called Nudism for Idiots by B. Careful the Third. Oh dear, yeah. It's another of those print-on-demand books. This one is as funny as it is serious, though. It even has a few illustrations and diagrams, but, you know, <laughs> I'll leave them to your imagination, shall I? <laughs> instead, I'm going to quote and describe a few of the chapters instead <laughs> and what they cover. Right then, so chapter two yeah, is called Stand Well Clear and Covers July 4th Fireworks. <laughs> It says, get extra long matches for this task. Hmm, good idea. <laughs> Chapter 4 stays with burn issues and covers grills and is called flying sparks and spitting oil. Hmm. <laughs> Chapter 6, tools, covers some other things that might be important for outdoor folks. You know, one, operating a chainsaw is one. <laughs> and the thought brought tears to me eyes. But that was before I got to the bit about folding tables and picnic chairs. <laughs> Chapter 8 is nearly as bad and covers the workshop. Of course, circular saws are obvious, came to mind first. But, you know, I'd never considered, you know, the dangers of a simple bench vice. Hmm. On the other hand, my mother old man's got at least six. No, not benches, vices. <laughs> Chapter 10 covers a few more risks and is called The Kitchen and starts off with a warning. Yep, a warning all right. <laughs> Not all recipes include meat and two veg, so stand well clear of the chopping board and opt for the kitchen with high preparation surfaces. <laughs> Common sense there, eh? Chapter 13, unlucky for some, yep, is called Aim High and covers sports. Yep. <laughs> Baseball? And even British cricket, to name a couple of them, yeah. In cricket, you know, they have a term called leg before wicket, or LBW, yeah. Unfortunately, as a nudist, there are other things that get in the way of flying balls, yeah. Well, I'll definitely leave that to your imagination. <laughs> but, you know, I must admit, when it came to the section on tug of war, <laughs> yeah, it was the last straw for me. And I had to put the book down right away <laughs> well this book's a one-off so i'm breaking all my rules yeah i'm handing it to me neighbor old fred it might be a matter of well life and death or even untimely amputation for him <laughs> well my lovelies that's all on my book review feature this time around 
<laughs> this is Ned Nat here with Ned Nat Radio Show. I'm here every Wednesday, but you can find all my shows again at nednat.com. I've got a listener favourite coming up now. Yep, me anomalies from around the world feature, and this time we're visiting China. Hmm. Unfortunately, it's another of them foodie ones. Oh yeah, dear, well, after dropping old Lonnie's roadkill recipes, I knew you'd be missing at least something repulsive. <laughs> Still, I recommend holding off on eating until the end of the show, or maybe even tomorrow with this one. Anyway, it's called Pidan, which means rotten eggs. Yeah, like something from Elsie's menu selection, I imagine. Yeah, mm. these century eggs stink of sulphur for one, and are prepared in a weird way. They cover the eggs with salt, clay and ashes and leave them for 100 days to cook. (laughs) By which time the yolk is green and gooey and the white is translucent and coloured like soy sauce. They look rather weird and disgusting too. You know, if I ever wanted rotten eggs, I'd just go for a look around the farm, you know, find one of them hidden broody nests. (laughs) If the ends lay in secret spot, you know, I usually find it by accident. And by then... Rotten is an understatement, you know. They're so bad, you usually see the vultures circling overhead. <laughs> this is Ned Natter here with the Ned Natter Radio Show. I'm here every Wednesday, but you can find all my shows at nednatter.com. Leaving Chinese cuisine, yep, that technical expression for nasty food. <laughs> We're heading to England. Yeah, see, I got a call from Nigel Ponce, the arrogant old catfish faced gentleman farmer. My brother, Young Buck, skipped the USA and manages Ponce's farm on his rambling estate. After living in Pennsylvania for 15 years, Buck picked up plenty of American expressions. He really enjoys confusing Ponce with them too. <laughs> anyway, old Ponce has to call me for an explanation. He hasn't got the internet in the manner. Just good old-fashioned manners. <laughs> so, how could I leave the subject of Nigel Ponce without mentioning my special feature right here on the Ned Nat Show? It's called American for Foreigners. After all, Ponce finds most regular phrases and sayings foreign. Oh dear, well here goes, American for foreigners with an arrogant British aristocratic contributor. <laughs> First up is his latest voicemail message. You have messages. Well hello Ned, this is Nigel Ponce calling you from England. I'm having even a problem this week with Bark. He's come out with the most bizarre thing to date, yes. He told me that he used to go to a local hotel on Fridays to see a hooker <laughs> and smoke a hooker on Saturday afternoon. I'm so confused, old cat. Please give me a call back. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> well, that's easy, Nigel. You know, let me translate it for you. This time, Bucks told Ponce that when he was in Pennsylvania, He used to always visit a hooker at a local hotel on Fridays and smoke a hooker on Saturday afternoon. (laughs) Ponce is totally confused. In fact, I think he couldn't be more confused if he tried. (laughs) That's it. Sounded more like a revelation, eh? (laughs) Well, let me try it, Nigel. You know, well, a hooker, and that's spelt H-O-O-K-E-R, is uh, a kind of special chambermaid requiring rather substantial tips for the room service she provides. Mm. Add to that, she's not usually on the hotel payroll either. No, although in a few notorious casinos, she could be. (laughs) On the other hand, a hooker, and that's spelt H-O-O-K-A-H, is something entirely different. Yep, it's a Hindustani word. And I know you've got plenty of Hindus in England, haven't you, Nigel? Anyway... (laughs) It's like a kind of big tobacco burning device with a glass bowl underneath filled with water. See, you burn the tobacco up top and smoke it through a pipe after it's bubbled through the water. In fact, it does sound like Buck taking a bath. Hubble bubble, yeah. 
I remember he always used to fart in there and shake the entire house. <laughs> anyway, back to the hooker. In this case, it was probably something stronger than tobacco cooking in there, though, when Buck was using it. Oh, dear. <laughs> this is Ned Nat here with the Ned Nat Radio Show. When I'm not here, you can find me and the shows at nednat.com. I got a few envelopes in the mail again by mistake, addressed for Rush. Yeah, I've been chuckling ever since. Rush, Lewis, Clark, Waterford, Nixon the Third. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I added over to me and Continent Political commentating neighbour old Rush's Stone Jackson farm to not only drop off his mail, but listen to the latest far fetched second hand news from the right centre. And of course, all in instalments, yep, yeah, with a weak bladder he's always rushing off. The poor old mucker's got his fanatical political agenda. His folks are still working on getting in every possible vote for their GOP buddies too. But now, me neighbour old Rush and our new neighbour, Jeremy Sprung, you know, the polyamorous political commentating democratic ex-TV host, <laughs> are head-to-head -head in competition for them precious votes. Yeah, see... I've been attempting some balance on my show by featuring a few words from the Democratic camp across the road with Jeremy Sprung too. As Rush likes to say, only a Democrat could be polyamorous. <laughs> and add to that, Rush is still trying to convince me that Sprung is a Marxist. Either way, Rush hasn't got the stage all to himself anymore and Sprung hopes, or <laughs> let's say... He hopes to give old Rush some drama and present the democratic case to me. This time, Sprung was rattling on about the importance of another three trillion dollars of government spending hmm, for a bunch of new initiatives, he said. Oh dear, yep, it's really got out of hand. And of course, Rush replied pretty quickly too. They wouldn't know initiative if it bit them on the ass. <laughs> All they're doing is funding China and sinking the good old USA. Mm. Well, there's Rush for you. And then he barks his standard statement. Gotta go, Ned. Oh, dear. By now, Sprung knows that Rush has always got to go and flush while never quite finishing his rant. <laughs> Despite his rushing off, Rush called me later in the day to not only further complain about Jeremy Sprung, but with his tendency teaser. Yeah, that's his own growing style of humour. Yep. And this time it is deep in the south, we still call sushi bait. <laughs> oh dear, I love that one. This time he's naturally referring to Nan's night out at a sushi restaurant. Yeah. Rush calls all Asian food worms and germs. <laughs> But well, that's uh, just a personal prejudice, isn't it? Going back to the time he spent in Vietnam. Yep. When he got food poisoning and had to be repatriated as a medical emergency after attending a trade summit whilst he was still working for the senator. Mm. Well, it makes a change from something in the political arena, doesn't it? Yep. It turned out, though, for a laugh here, that the food poisoning was caused by undercooked hot dogs from the day before. Oh, dear. <laughs> this is Ned Nutter here with the Ned Nutter Radio Show. I'm here every Wednesday, but you can find all my shows again at nednutter.com. They're all stored for you as podcasts, so if you want me repeats and listen to me voice all over again, stop by and say hello. Me lovely neighbour, young Alice Jones, invited me over for our weekly vegan cake and fair trade coffee sit down. And last time it was a chat about pet hens, yep, with a free collar and leash. This time Alice is seeing things in her freshly cleansed crystal balls, yeah. She said it was all good stuff for me though, you know, things are looking up and she reckons the left ball forecast... <laughs> That beyond it, an LC will eventually break me sofa into pieces and have to live somewhere else altogether. Mm. Yeah, good news indeed that was. <laughs> anyway, the right ball was about to forecast something else. But when Alice put her hand over it, the thing got all steamed up and she started to blush. <laughs> so, I'll have to wait for that news until next time, I suppose. Anyway, I'm glad the coffee and cake was reliably nice, though, as usual. <laughs> um, 
It's Ned Natter here with the Ned Natter Radio Show. When I'm not here, you can find all my shows again at nednatter.com. Well, me lovelies, it's time for this week's questions and odd news items from you, me listeners. Yeah, I got it all here on the Ned Natter Show. Right then, me first item comes from Enid in Egan. That's in Minnesota somewhere anyway. <laughs> she called me about something a bit strange, you know. But for some reason, she wanted to ask me, yep, of all people, <laughs> why, well, she'd seen this advert for a box of dehydrated water. <laughs> yep, just add water. <laughs> You've got to be drunk, crazy, or both to fall for this, won't you? <laughs> On the other hand, it might make an excellent gift for me, Fireman Ding Dang, you know. He'd be puzzling over that one for days. Or oh, maybe even weeks. <laughs> My second item comes from Zachary in Zachary. Yeah, that's in Louisiana. Yep. And he's concerned about this thing he saw online. Well, where else? They're called emergency underpants. <laughs> Oh dear. As a kid, you know, me, me brothers Buck and Nelson and me were told by old Nan to always wear clean underwear. Yep, she reckoned it was just in case we were involved in an accident. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as a child, that was highly confusing, you know, because it really depends on what kind of accident you're having, doesn't it? <laughs> Add to that, Zachary, are they all one-size-fits-all kind of deal, Yeah. Well, these uh, these things. Oh well, sounds very risky to me, mate. <laughs> me third item this time comes from Greta in Green Bay, and she'd listened to me show about plastic pollution in the oceans, and has been reading up on this new research that says that hermit crabs and shrimps are not so bothered by plastic after all. Oh no! See, there's this additive in the plastic. It's called oleamide. Yep. And to these crazy crustaceans, it's a stimulant and sex pheromone. <laughs> when they get involved with plastic, they get very excited and attracted to the plastic. Oh dear. I wonder if they'll uh, end up crossbreeding, you know, a plastic coated shrimp or coming up with that. <laughs> anyway, we'll see it on the market in the future, no doubt. Well, there's one thing about this plastic thing, Greta, right, that's interesting. As you've answered a question for me, yeah, see, the wife's always getting so excited about plastic too, yeah. Plates, cups and cutlery, yeah, but it's not about sex at all. It's just about eating a personal kind of pleasurable experience. Oh dear. <laughs> this is Ned Nat here with the Ned Nat Radio Show. I am here every Wednesday, but you can find all my shows again at nednat.com. Well, they're all stored for your podcasts, so if you want me repeats and listen to me voice all over again, stop by and say hi. Me dubious con man agent, 50% is lining up with a new ad this week. He's got something quite unique this time. So, here goes. You're just going to love our custom-made head tent. We've got every option, size and colour, even a camouflage version for outdoors. And a super-sized one for big heads. <laughs> yep. With our special workout version, nobody will know if you're bright red, sweating or out of breath. It's the perfect solution for all your needs. You'll be one step up from the cubicle, folks, with an instant pop-up head tent. <laughs> so once inside... Hoodwink the competition and do everything you always wanted to do. You know, pick your nose, make ugly faces, eat secretly without sharing, and all those troublesome zits. Make a call or send obscene text messages in private. Not a soul will see you, and that's our out of this world guarantee. So mask what you're doing today. Visit our website now at pick and pop in private.org <laughs> and find the best cover for all your needs but wait for this week only we've got an exclusive offer just for you yeah buy one get one free yeah absolutely free so why not treat that ugly co-worker or nagging relative today <laughs> you know that sounds just like the kind of thing I need for a few folks around here. <laughs> Probably I'll take advantage of that offer too, you know, the special offer and cover up the entire family. 
This is Ned Natter here with the Ned Natter Radio Show and whichever way you dissect me show is unpasteurized and unfiltered. But that's it, me lovelies, and on that note, I better go. So until next time, remember, farmers are getting older, some more than others. It's time some new blood came down on the farm and gave us an hand. Shite matters, without us you wouldn't have anything to eat, and without me Wednesdays wouldn't be so much fun, would they? <laughs> In the meantime, you can find all my shows again at nednatter.com. Yep, they're all safe as podcasts too. And to that, there's them social media links, so come by, say hi. It'd be great to hear from you. Thanks so much for listening. It's been a pleasure chatting with you, and I hope you join me on the Ned Nutter Show again. So until then, keep a smile on your face. Think positive and don't sweat that small stuff. The grass is not always greener on the other side. It might just be a freeway. (laughs) Goodbye, me lovelies.